If you're a dancer and looking for special tips on how to apply for the O1 visa, this video is for you. Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and I'm an immigration attorney. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about special tips for dancers who are applying for the O-1 visa. This is not going to be like a general overview of what is an O-1 visa. I've already done a video on that, so if you want to check out the link, look at it down below. So today we're going to be talking about dancers, the dance industry, and all the common pitfalls I see when it comes to like dance O-1 visa applications. I called it tips, but honestly it's just me like ranting and raving about like pet peeves and uh, maybe giving you best practices when it comes to like applying for the O1. So let's get started! Okay, with number one, it really has to do with like the lead role criteria. So the criteria will be lead role in productions that are distinguished. Okay, so a lot of dancers have a problem fitting into that criteria because a lot of dance today is very ensemble based, right? You look at like contemporary dance, there's a whole bunch of people on stage, there's no like lead dancer. This isn't like ballet where like you have the prima ballerina, you have the chorus. No, it's not like that. Or even like let's say a music video, right? So it's like a whole bunch of different people. So the problem is immigration finds that that's not considered a lead role. And even when it comes to music videos, right, if you're like the lead dancer or something like that, a lot of times immigration will push back and say that the music video is not about you being a dancer, it's about whoever the singer is, and that is going to be hugely problematic. So I don't know, the way I like to think about that is that if the client is able to sort of like qualify that they are a lead role within the show or something like that, maybe one possibility is to get a letter recommendation from the choreographer and explain like why their role in the dance piece is considered lead. Um, other things to consider is that if you are going to be creating your own work, and you're a solo dancer, well guess what? Yes, you are a lead because you are the only one on stage. So that's not always possible when it comes to like dance, but at the end of the day, I think it's really about finding documentation that shows that you're going to be lead in order for you to be able to fit into that criteria. And I think like testimonials and letters of recommendation are going to be key in that area. Tip number two is press. And press, well my tip is make sure the press is about you. Um, so this is the criteria that is, I mean the wording is national or international recognition for achievements in the form of major media which is by or about the beneficiary. So in this case what I'm really talking about is like newspaper articles and interviews and just things like that. I guess the biggest problem that I see is that a lot of times clients who are dancers come to me with like an article and the article is about the dance piece. It doesn't mention the client by name and it doesn't show that they are like a lead dancer even and that is going to be hugely problematic. So when it comes to press it's going to be by or about the beneficiary, right? So for example, the most ideal form of press, I think it's going to be like an interview or something like that. So if you can get an interview where um, the article talks about you, talks about your achievements, I think that's a great thing to have. I think if you have a piece that's like talking about general choreographic, or maybe it's, it's like about the dance piece and you're not even mentioned, then that's not something that you can use at all. And number three, teaching. Do or do not, I guess that is the question. So um, I guess the reason why I would say like teaching is not a great idea is because it's really difficult to quantify that as like a production that is distinguished because you're teaching a class. and you know, a class is not a production, and even if it were, what kind of documentation would you have to show that it is distinguished? So I would say like teaching in terms of like being able to fit into the lead role uh, in productions that are distinguished, that's going to be a really, really tough sell. I think one possibility in terms of helping you positioning teaching as something part of your O1 application is the critical role for organizations that are distinguished. So maybe you teach at, I don't know, ABT or something like that, and you are like their specialist in, I don't know, Russian ballet or something like that. So then I think it might be possible if you can get a letter of recommendation from the organization showing that your work is 
critical to the organization, meaning without you, they would not be able to function, and that this organization is going to be considered distinguished. Um, I think you need to be able to fulfill both parts of it. So I think like that's the way I see teaching could fit into the O1 application. But in general, like it's not considered production. And for that part, it's going to be very, very difficult to get into. All right. Um, so number four, I guess uh, we are. I'm sort of bouncing off like the, the last thing that I just said. So when it comes to the organization, um, part of being a critical role for an organization is that you bring special skills to the table, right? So you can't just say like, it's a dance troupe and I'm a dancer, so therefore I'm critical. Because immigration is going to push back and say like, yes, you're a dancer, you're one of many, you are not critical, you can be easily replaced by someone else. And I guess that is the huge problem. So you need to be very, very specific in terms of like what skills you bring to the table. Maybe you're the dance captain, uh, maybe you are like a specific choreographer, maybe you have very specific skills in like Baroque dance or something like that. Make sure that it's really really clearly stated in the letter recommendation what your skills are and why it's considered crucial and important and critical to the organization. All right, my last tip is that Sometimes the O1 visa is not necessarily the best visa for a dancer. So for example, there are other visa types that could potentially, you know, help you come to the United States and work. And what I'm talking about is like the P1B visa and the P3 visa. I'm just going to speak briefly about those visa types because I've already made more in-depth videos about them. So if you want to check them out, I'm just going to put the link down below. But just briefly, the P1B visa is for people who are coming to the United States to join like an already established group. So for example, if it's a dance troupe and they have been like, you know, working all over the country, they have like a long track record and you're just joining the group, then I think that could be a possibility for you to apply for that. So that way you don't have to show that you're extraordinary. It's actually the group that has to show that they're extraordinary. And then the other visa type could be like the P3 visa. And the P3 visa is a culturally unique visa. So what does this mean? This means that the dance that you do is culturally specific to a uh, you know specific cultural group so for example like indian classical dance right chinese lion dance or like russian ballet or something like that if you can sort of peg it to a cultural group and shows that it comes from that group and that you have the skills in learning you know that type of dance and are able to come here and perform and teach it then i think like the p3 might be an option for you as well so those are my tips rants best practices when it comes for dancers who are applying for the o1 visa if you like this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe i have plenty of other videos when it comes to the O1 visa and I will see you soon.